Essex, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here with today's 3 Minute Thursday. Today's short conversation is going to be about the history of diesel emission standards. I participate in a lot of Facebook groups and internet message boards about tractors and lately I've been having a bit of a pet peeve. So every once in a while I see guys referring to tractors as having uh, no emissions. And that is just simply factually, in most cases, wrong in the references that they're making. Uh, tractors and small diesel engines have had emissions requirements since the late 1990s. Uh, most guys today refer to uh, um, no emissions tractors as being those without after treatment systems on the exhaust to clean up that, what we would know in the tractor industry as tier four. But tier four was preceded by tiers one through three, and all of those had an impact on the way the diesel engines ran. Um, and guys seem to, to not be attuned to some of those differences. Um, if we go back and we look at some of those early tiers, tiers one through three were achieved without after treatment on the exhaust. But that doesn't mean that there weren't other things happening on engines as we move through those. Um, I was selling tractors through most of these years and have very clear memories as it seemed like manufacturers were having to roll out model after model after model to keep up with these ever-changing standards. And tier one and tier two happened with very little fanfare. Um, we really weren't detecting a whole lot of changes to the products as those things were being introduced. It was largely engine tuning that was being done. And that tuning was largely addressing a little bit of particulate matter output on the engines and, and cleaning up the amount of soot and stuff that was coming out and also worked down the amount of CO2 at the same time. The first point that we would have seen the impacts of this engine tuning would have been in tier three. Tier three came in right about in 2008 and it, the major mechanical system that was put in place to address emissions in tier three was EGR, exhaust gas recirculation. EGR, when it's used, is going to lower combustion temperatures and impact the efficiency and the fuel economy of the engine a little bit. And we started to notice that. We could see the difference between a tier two and a tier three engine. When tier four came about, tier four was the point that we started to see after treatment systems put onto the engine and diesel particulate filters and def fluid, all the things that guys are starting to be attuned to today. Uh, tier four actually started in 2008 with the lowest horsepower engines, but in 2012, 2013 is when you started to see it a lot more across the board as it rolled into higher horsepower tiers. Tier four actually did take care of some of the performance problems that we would have seen with tier three. So because we're not having to detune the engines as much as what was happening in tier three, tier four being that we're treating most of our emission stuff on the outside of the engine now with after treatment systems, allowed engine designers in order to tune those engines more efficiently and not run as much EGR. And so we could have engines with better fuel economy now in tier four than what we did in tier three. So a lot of guys, when they're looking at tractors or assuming that tier four is only negatives, that's not actually the case. There are some legitimate engine tuning benefits now because we're treating emissions on the outside, on the after treatment side of the engine that are gonna enable the engines to run better than what they would have during the, during the tier three time period. So in today's modern emissions standards, when what we would call tier four final, after all of these things have finally been rolled in, we ultimately now have six different classifications of engines, and they're, they're broken up by horsepower ranges. Within each one of those classes, there's different requirements for what the engine is allowed to put out of its, ex its exhaust. And essentially, smaller engines are allowed to be dirtier than bigger engines are. You're gonna notice that uh, there's a lot of tractors sitting right at 26 horsepower, um, and that's because that's the point at 19 kilowatts is what the standard would be defined as. That's the point at which you start to have a tighter standard that now requires after treatment. Under 26 horsepower, you still have a tier four engine. A lot of guys refer to those tractors as not being tier four. They are. They're just in a classification where the manufacturers can meet those requirements without the use of after treatment. Once we go up above 26 horsepower, between 26 and about 75, that's the point where you're able to treat most of your exhaust without def fluid. So you're meeting those emission standards with either a DPF, a diesel particulate filter, or a DOC, a diesel oxidation catalyst. Every tractor has one of the two. 
in that 26 to 75 horsepower range. After you go over top of 75 horsepower, that's where the standard starts to clamp down on the PM enough and the NOx enough that it's gonna require death fluid in order to treat that further. So those engines above 75 horsepower are gonna have a combination of a DPF, a diesel particulate filter, and also a death treatment system, that blue fluid that you have to dump in, that's gonna help clean up that exhaust further. Another change that happened in conjunction with these emission stages was a change in the formulation of diesel fuel. So in the late 2000s, sulfur content in diesel fuel had been dropping, and that's because some of the hardware that was required in these tier four emission stages, namely the absorbent materials in there for cleaning up the exhaust gases and the screens in there for particulate matter are sensitive to the sulfur content in the fuel. So removing that sulfur content enabled that hardware to work properly because it is sensitive to those components of the fuel. One thing that would have happened on the equipment by dropping that sulfur content is that you remove some of the lubrication from it. Sulfur was a lubricant in the fuel at the time. Modern engines now are pretty much set up that we're gonna be ex expecting that low sulfur content, but if you have an older engine or you just really wanna take care of your equipment, a fuel additive in order to boost the lubrication in your fuel is certainly not gonna hurt. That stuff is fairly inexpensive. The one that we sell in here in our parts department is about 12 bucks to treat 250 gallons, and that can be a little bit of insurance policy that you've got that proper lubrication in your fuel to keep your engine healthy. So that's just a real rough run through on how the tiered emission standards have been rolled out over the years. There seems to be a lot of misunderstanding how this stuff works and also a lot more depth and intricacy to these things than what I dove in in this video. You can do a lot of reading and research on this and I'm sure there's gonna be guys out there watching much more knowledgeable about this than I even am. So I'd like to hear your notes down in the comments of, of how this stuff is rolled out. Uh, one note about this from the dealership side, um, you will hear a lot of grumbling about this stuff online. Um, I can say here at this point today, we feel like we're through most of the problems that emission systems may have had as they have rolled out. The on-road truck industry has had vastly more problems than what we've had with tractors. The large reason for that is because these emission systems work best when they're run hot and hard, and that tends to be what our equipment does. You're running your RPMs high, you're working your equipment, and the emission systems work that much more effectively and efficiently than, say, an on-road truck where you may be nearly idling up and down the highway as you're pulling loads back and forth. So, well, it's not something that we're necessarily thrilled of. All of these things have been really more complex and vastly more expensive than what the EPA certainly was figuring from what I was seeing. Um, and we are essentially doing good for the environment. When you stand beside these tractors, you're absolutely going to notice that the exhaust on a modern machine is vastly more cleaner than what it ever has been before. Um, even machines that are run inside, uh, we, we sell excavators into interior environments for inside demolition and those kinds of things. And those older tiers, we were installing exhaust scrubbers and that kind of stuff so people could work near equipment. And with tier four, that kind of stuff is just not necessary anymore. The exhaust is clean enough coming out of the stack that you can be around the machine and not feel like you're sucking in diesel fumes. So uh, there's benefit to that in the operator that you don't have that blowing back in your face while you're working. And in tier four, like I said, benefits over tier three in the efficiency of that engine, the way that it runs. That's not necessarily a, uh, a golden ticket to go find a, a tier three tractor. So if you, uh, you have questions about the buying process, you're shopping for a piece of equipment, or if you have parts of service needs that we can help with, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com. Tractor is cleaner than that 70-year-old Ford truck for sure. <laughs>